Time travel is one of the most interesting concepts ever created. Who doesn't fantasize about going back in time and meeting their heroes or stopping a horrific tragedy and becoming a hero themselves? Me personally, I would go back in time and stop myself from marrying my ex-wife. But sadly, that's never gonna happen because time travel is impossible. But maybe that's just what they want you to think. Who's they, you may ask? <laughs> Don't you like the f***ing know? I'm Dan Tavius, how you doing? And today we're gonna be talking about time travel. Throughout history, there have been many instances of possible time travelers. So we're gonna take a look at a couple of these instances. And by the end of this video, we might finally be able to answer the age old question. Is time travel real? I mean, honestly, we probably won't answer that question, but w watch the video anyways. Now, full disclosure, some of these stories are much more convincing than others, okay? Like, some of them are straight up dog shit, but I still think they're all very interesting and they're worth taking a look at. So, uh, let's stop wasting time with the intro and jump right into this biatch. All right, we're gonna start off with one of the most famous cases of a possible time traveler. Even if you're a novice to time travel, you've probably heard of the Charlie Chaplin cell phone lady. This was filmed all the way back in 1928, and it looks like she's talking on a cell phone. Now, some people believe this woman traveled back in time to kill Hitler, but she got Hitler confused with Charlie Chaplin, but I guess that's just what they get for sending a woman with dementia to do the mission. Hello, it's me, Muriel. I finally arrived in the past, and I'm ready to kill that bastard Hitler. All right, I gotta admit, I, I made up this theory, but come on, it sounds plausible, right? Detractors of the time traveler theory say that the woman was most likely using a hearing aid, which I was surprised to learn was invented back in the late 1800s. And back in the 20s, they looked something like this. And funnily enough, this wasn't the only case of somebody talking on a cell phone before cell phones were a thing. Take a look at this video from a 1938 film. Right there, right there. What, what are, what's this broad doing? That's Is that a cell phone? Is that a fucking cell phone? I don't know, but it did look like a cell phone. Oh, and then there's this clip from a Mike Tyson fight in 1995. The Mike Tyson fight from 1995. 21 years ago. And what's that guy in the crowd holding? Could that be a smartphone? Tell me that doesn't look like a smartphone, bro. You cannot tell me that's not an iPhone 5. Next up, we got another certified time travel classic. This is a photo, obviously. It was taken in 1940 during the opening of the South Fork Bridge in Canada after it had previously been destroyed due to a flood. If you look closely, you'll notice this dripped out guy that looks like he doesn't belong. This dude's whole outfit looks like it came from Urban Outfitters. Now, it's been pointed out that you could buy all of these items of clothing back in the 1940s, but to put that fit together? His whole ensemble is absolutely succulent. He was either ahead of his time or he went back in time, but honestly, I, I don't know why he would go back in time to the opening of some schmuck bridge in Canada of all things. That's like buying a plane ticket to go to Ohio. Doesn't make any sense, so I don't think he's a time traveler, honestly. Oh, guys, I just traveled here from the future to let you know about the sponsor of today's video, Dr. Squatch Soap. Ladies and gentlemen, let's be honest for a second. If you're a fan of me, you probably smell like <laughs> shit. But it's not your fault. You probably just haven't found the right soap. Luckily, Dr. Squatch was nice enough to send me a couple of their finest products so I can tell you guys all about it. Last night I used this wood barrel bourbon soap and I smell absolutely scrumptious. And let me tell you, I'm not the only one who thinks so. For the first time in years, I was out in public and people didn't cross the street to escape my stench. And the thing I like most about this soap is that it doesn't have all those harsh chemicals that you find in other brands. Well, second low, just in my case, if you know what I'm saying. They list all their ingredients on the back, and it's all good stuff. Like, you could probably eat this. Okay, don't, don't actually eat it. If you guys want to smell delicious like me, Dr. Squatch is running a special for my audience. New customers can get 20% off on orders of $20 or more. Just use my code and click the link in the description of this video. And they don't just have soap. They have a bunch of other stuff. They have like deodorant and shampoo and conditioner. I'm actually wearing the deodorant right now. I think I'm going to switch over from Old Spice to them. So uh, thank you so much to Dr. Squatch for sponsoring this video. But I'm going to head back to the future now. Insider trading, it's one of the worst things you can do. 
right next to genocide and emulating Nintendo games. An individual charged with insider trading can receive heavy fines and long prison sentences. Unless, of course, you're a member of Congress. But unfortunately for Andrew Carlson, he was not. He was just some schmuck from the year 2256. Back in 2003, the FBI arrested Carlson. He had just enjoyed a massive streak of good luck. Over the course of two weeks, he turned a modest $800 investment into $350 million. That's a 43 million percent increase, the highest in the history of the stock market. And you know, obviously this made the authorities suspicious, so they decided to check the guy out. During the investigation, he admitted to everything. He traveled back in time from the year 2256 and knew exactly which trades to bet on because they already happened. But the police didn't buy his story. A member of the Securities and Exchange Commission said he's either a lunatic or a pathological liar. He capitalized on unexpected business developments which simply cannot be pure luck. The only way he could pull it off is with illegal insider information. He was then placed in jail and had his bail set at $1 million, which is kind of screwed up, you know? Technically, there are no laws in place regarding time travel, so free my boy Andrew. Luckily though, he wouldn't be in jail long, because the day after his incarceration, somebody posted his bail, and then he was never seen again. Now, according to Snopes, this story is a hoax, but these are the same mother suckers that say the earth is round, so you can't really believe anything they say. Sir Robert Victor Goddard was a member of the British Royal Air Force who fought in both world wars, which is very impressive, alright? I haven't even fought in one. By the end of World War II, he was a decorated war hero and even got knighted by the Queen herself. In 1935, Goddard was taking a routine flight from Edinburgh, Scotland to London when he passed over an airfield in Drem, Scotland. Now, this place had been abandoned for over 20 years and it showed. The place was falling apart, there was overgrown grass everywhere, cows were grazing near the landing strip, and the buildings were more run down than your mom. Victor flew over the airfield not thinking much of it, and not long after he encountered a horrible storm. And this wasn't like a typical storm, he described it as having a bluish yellowish tint. So he turned around to go back to the airfield to wait out the storm. But when he got back, the place had completely changed. It no longer looked abandoned, it was completely repaired. Even stranger was that there were yellow planes and mechanics working on these planes. Dude must have smoked some DMT before his flight, goddamn. Four years after his experience, World War II broke out and the Drem airfield was put back in action. And also the British were known to use yellow planes for training exercises that looked exactly like the ones that Goddard described. So this man traveled four years into the future which means he could have stopped Hitler, but he didn't. It's too late for Hitler. I found out about our next time traveler through a Reddit post. So somewhere between 10 and 12 years ago, me and my dad watched a YouTuber that claimed to be a time traveler. I'm not totally sure I remember his name, but I'm fairly certain it was Von Dalton. Now, this guy wasn't just some kook. This dude would walk into libraries and go to history books and find pictures of himself from different periods of time. And he would do this many times in different libraries in different states. It's important to mention his YouTube channel wasn't very popular. As time went on, weird shit started happening to the guy. He got arrested for trespassing many times for virtually no reason, and he'd stay absent from YouTube for weeks or months. I guess because he was in jail or being detained. And when he'd make another video, he'd explain it was illegal for him to talk about what happened to him. I'm basically writing this to see if there's possibly someone else out there who remembers Von Dalton. Now, the person he's referring to is actually real, but his name is Van Helton, not Van Dalton, you fucking idiot. And he claims to have traveled to multiple periods in time. Oh, don't believe me? Check out this photo that clearly depicts Van in 1857, 1916, and 1945. And if that's not proof enough, Check out this video. Sadly these days the man has fallen from grace. Long gone are the days when he was traveling back in time and banging broads from the Victorian era. Honestly, he's a bit of a lol cow now. If you look up his name on YouTube, you'll see a bunch of people shitting on him, and you'll even find some classic Von Helton rage compilations. Like, if this guy's life was a rise and fall video, he's now in the fall portion. 
And from what I can tell, his YouTube channel was terminated, and I'm pretty sure his Twitch was as well, because I can't find any trace of it, despite finding dozens of re-uploads of his clips from Twitch. Now, this could very well be the government trying to shut him down. I guess what I'm trying to say here is, uh, I believe him. During World War II, the US government was funding a number of secret research programs that could turn the tide of the war in their favor. Most famously, the Manhattan Project, which gave us the nuclear bomb. One of the lesser known projects, though, was the Philadelphia Experiment of 1943. Now, this is a deep ass rabbit hole that I could make an entire video on, and one day, I probably will. So, I'm just gonna scratch the surface in this video, but basically, the government was trying to create a technology that would hide naval ships from enemy radar or make them completely invisible. The exact nature of the research isn't known, but it doesn't really matter. What does matter is that scientists were able to teleport a US Navy ship, the USS Eldridge, from its port in Philadelphia to another port in Norfolk, Virginia. One night, witnesses claimed that they saw a strange greenish blue glow, and then suddenly, it disappeared for no more than a few minutes, and then reappeared back at its home port in Philadelphia. The really messed up thing is that the crew that were on the Eldridge at the time of the incident were affected in disturbing ways. Some of them went insane, others had severe health problems, and some of them were fused to the ship itself, like their skin and flesh became a part of the metal. So how does this tie into time travel? Well, some people believe that when the ship disappeared, it actually traveled through time. So there you go. In 1954, a man came to Haneda Airport in Japan from Taiwan. When he presented his passport to the airport security in Japan, there was something off about it. It was written in a language that nobody could recognize, and it was also issued in the city of Tamanrasset, the capital of Taurid. Now, if you've never heard of Taurid, then you're not alone, because it ain't real. The man, who went by the name John Zagris, was then arrested for falsifying documents and taken in for questioning. During the interrogation, he claimed that Taurid was a nation in Africa, south of the Sahara, and he also told police that he was a US intelligence agent. So, it's possible that our boy John traveled here from a timeline where Taurid is a real place. Or maybe he's just a fraudster because they found a bunch of fake traveler's checks in his luggage. But I think this story is more of a testament to how shitty airport security was back in the day. Like, this dude went to multiple countries using this bogus passport, and nobody cared enough to glance at it for longer than two seconds. Either that or they just didn't want to seem dumb for not recognizing the country. Pellegrino Ernetti was an Italian physicist who became a priest later in life. In the 1950s, he was part of a team of scientists funded by the Vatican that worked on a chronovisor, which is a device that can see through other moments of time. The device didn't allow people to actually time travel, but they could see glimpses. This information was revealed by fellow priest and close personal friend of Ernetti, Father Francois Brunet, who said that Ernetti confided in him about this secret project. Yeah, real good fucking friend that guy is, spilling the beans on his buddy's darkest secret. Brunet went on to say that Ernetti initially used the device to look into the year 2008. And there's actually video evidence of what he saw. Now, uh, keep in mind, this is probably fake, but it's still pretty interesting. Okay, so the device couldn't actually look into the future, only the past, but according to Brunet, the team was able to see many notable events in the past, including the life and death of Jesus. Unfortunately though, none of us are going to be able to look into the past because the Vatican apparently had the device either destroyed or stored in their secret archive for fear of the device falling into the wrong hands and being used to reveal state secrets. So a lot of these time travel stories originate from a YouTube channel called Apex TV. They do a lot of interviews with people claiming to be time travelers, and most of their content is based on these people, so shout out to them. It's actually a really cool channel, you guys should check it out. Actually, I see that they haven't posted in over a year, so... Hopefully they didn't get whacked. Anyways, one of the interviews they conducted on this channel was with a man named William Taylor who claims he worked for a secret British time travel program, which sent him not only to the year 3000, but also to 8973. It's a shame he wasn't able to find a cure for that hairline in either time period though. I don't know why I'm shitting on these people, man. They didn't do anything to me. Anyways, he claims that in the future, there are no borders between countries and there are human robot hybrids and sentient AI. 
He also claims that people communicated telepathically. Everyone in the future had this device implanted in them that allowed them to do an instant brain scan on anyone they were speaking to and that their words were instantly translated um, into a language that was comfortable for that person. I noticed as well that the people of the future had very small mouths, which is obviously a result of them not using their mouths that much. I mean, the only way that they spoke to each other was, I mean, the only way to describe the way they spoke to each other was telepathically. Man, this is like Alex Jones's worst nightmare, bro. <laughs> Thankfully, you know, it's probably not true. I mean, the guy, you know, is probably making it up, but he was hooked up to a lie detector the whole time. Are you an actual time traveler who has visited the future? Yes, I am. All right. Next question. Did you meet robot-human hybrids in the future? Yes, I did. In fact, I met uh, a great many of them. I mean, to be fair, though, lie detectors aren't 100% accurate. I mean, I once passed a lie detector saying I didn't commit tax fraud. All right, so that was probably one of the more interesting videos I found on Apex TV, but there was another one that I thought was cool that I should include in this video as well. W.D. Davis is the name of a time traveler from the year 2200. In his time, every disease has been eradicated, and all the nutrients your body needs can be obtained from a single pill that only needs to be taken once per week. This is everything you need for a week, and our government supplies these monthly to everyone. Man, not to be rude, but it looks like my man's been having more than one pill a week, if you know what I'm saying. This situation is very similar to the Victor Goddard one. It's a time slip scenario. The year was 1932. German reporters Bernard Hutton and Joachim Brandt were working for a German newspaper when they were tasked with going to Hamburg for a story. When they got there, everything was pretty normal. It was a pretty boring day. But then bombs started dropping from the sky and shit started exploding. So they got the heck out of there as fast as they could, but not before snapping some pics of the chaos. When they got back to the office and explained what they saw to their co-workers, everybody just thought they were lunatics and laughed at them. Lucky for them, they had photo evidence. They were about to prove all those schmucks who laughed at them wrong. But there was one issue. When they developed the photos, there was no evidence of any bombing. Very embarrassing. And over time, Hutton had pretty much forgotten about the situation. But then 11 years later in 1943, Hutton, who was now living in England, opened up a newspaper and shit his pants when he saw a story about an air raid in Hamburg called Operation Gamora. And the photos from it looked exactly like what he saw back in 1932. The situation was very unfortunate for the people in Hamburg, but you know, luckily for Hutton, he could finally rub it in those schmucks faces that he was right the whole time. Now, when I first read about this, I thought the whole story was bullshit. Like I thought these two guys didn't even exist, but apparently J. Bernard Hutton was a pretty prolific author who wrote like 80 books. So I was thinking maybe he made it up to sell more books, but that would be weird because the dude wrote like nonfiction. So I, I don't know. It's probably real. All right. So this one has got to be the most insane one so far. Donald Trump. You guys remember Donald Trump, right? He's perhaps most well known as the founder of Truth Social. But what you may not know about him is that he's also a time traveler, along with his son, future Dallas Mavericks center Baron Trump. At least that's what some people think. I mean, it kind of makes sense. You know, Trump did win against all odds. He had everything going against him and he still pulled it off. So maybe he is a time traveler. So back in the 1890s, a guy named Ingersoll Lockwood wrote a series of books revolving around the character Baron Trump, who stumbled upon a portal in Russia that teleports him to different time periods. And the person who guides him on these journeys is a man named Don. And look at the little schmuck. He even looks like Donald's son when he was younger. Now, on its own, that's not that crazy of a coincidence, but Lockwood had another novel called The Last President that makes even more connections. The book opens up in New York City during a state of social unrest after the election of a, quote, enormously opposed outsider candidate, unquote. And this newly elected candidate just so happened to be an extremely wealthy man who lived on Fifth Avenue, the location of Trump Tower. Oh, and he also chose a man named Pence to serve on his cabinet. But how could Donald Trump possibly be a time? Time traveler how would he even get access to a time machine well as it turns out he may have done it with some help from nikola tesla see nikola tesla worked on a lot of unusual experiments back in his day including wireless electricity a ray gun and of course time travel after his death his research was passed on to a team of engineers at mit and one of those engineers was john trump donald trump's uncle holy freaking smokes man what does this mean for the geopolitical landscape? 
All right, you know how I said about the last one that that was the craziest one? Well, I lied. This is the most insane one, and it also involves a former U.S. president. In 2011, two men, Andrew D. Basiago and William Stillings, came forward with a shocking revelation. They claimed that in the 70s and 80s, they worked on a secret government program called Project Pegasus whose main objective was to teleport people to Mars. The program was a joint venture between the CIA and DARPA, or the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. And apparently, it worked. Like, they actually created a functional teleportation device based on research conducted by Nikola Tesla. Uh, a little bit about my background. I was one of America's early time-space explorers, uh, as I described uh, on Wednesday on, on Coast. Officially speaking, it was from 1969 to 72 that I served in DARPA's Project Pegasus, although the first time I teleported on behalf of the U.S. government was uh, during the 1967-68 time frame. When Andrew and William went to Mars for the first time, the first thing they said upon arrival was, hmm, I mean, it's better than Ohio, but they didn't stop with just teleporting to Mars. That's pussy shit. They also traveled through time. In fact, Basiago claims to have traveled to Ford's Theater on the night of Lincoln's assassination on multiple occasions. There's even a photo from back then that he claims is him. See that schmuck? See that dumb haircut? That's him, apparently. That picture, the, the famous uh, Josephine Cobb image of Lincoln at Gettysburg from Lincoln's time, that the child on the front left foreground of that picture was me, and it was confirmed as me by the CIA in the early 1970s. I mean, there we go, bro. In indisputable proof right there. What more do you guys want? So these guys were children at the time of these experiments. They were between the ages of seven and nine years old, and they had eight other kids with them in this group. And if you're wondering why they were using young kids for these, it's because apparently their bodies can withstand the time travel more. I, I don't know. One of the other kids in the program was, and I shit you not, future president of the United States, Barack Obama. According to Basiago, as many as seven parents of the 10 students, all with ties to the CIA, audited the class. Mr. Obama's mother, Stanley Ann Dunham, carried out assignments for the CIA in Kenya and Indonesia. Now, I don't recall hearing about this at all when it first broke, but apparently it got so big that the White House put out an official statement on it. When asked by Wired Magazine if Obama had ever time-traveled, one of his staffers said, only if you count watching Marvin the Martian. You know, it's a shame. Even after all that, they still weren't able to find out what Obama's last name is. But I guess some mysteries are meant to never be known. But yeah, man, that's about all we have. And uh, I know these were some pretty weird stories and kind of, you know, outlandish. But personally, I'm one of those people that think anything could potentially be possible. Well, anything besides me liking Franklin the Turtle and paying taxes. But other than that, I'm pretty open-minded. That being said, there were maybe only one or two things that are a little bit convincing, but for the most part, it's, you know, it's, it's a lot of horse shit, probably. But it's still super interesting to hear about this stuff, and I hope you guys feel the same. Anyways, man, thank you guys so much for watching, and thank you to the patrons who subsidize my lifestyle, especially the people that I'm listing on screen now. You guys are the best. And if you want to support my YouTube, go check out my Patreon and check me out on all other social media too. It's listed in the description of this video. Thank you guys so much. Later.